We learn to accept our failures. I think that's the thing I see with my students, that the ones who cannot accept their failures, forget it. They're going nowhere. They are judging themselves by, the, by standards they don't deserve. Nobody deserves those standards. Walt Whitman wrote badly. He's our greatest poet. Emily Dickinson wrote badly. She's damn near our greatest poet. I mean, if our greatest poets can write badly, then why can't we? Of course we can write badly. And if we won't extend ourselves that freedom and that generosity, we'll stall ourselves. We'll just stop. We have to accept that. And, and I've done that for myself. I've said, Phil, you can write really badly. Now you know that, and when you do it, just throw it away. It, it's relatively harmless. Few trees suffer, but you know they recycle the shit. What work is? We stand in the rain in a long line, waiting at Ford Highland Park for work. You know what work is. If you're old enough to read this, you know what work is, although you may not do it. Forget you. This is about waiting, shifting from one foot to another, feeling the light rain falling like mist into your hair, blurring your vision until you think you see your own brother ahead of you, maybe 10 places. You rub your glasses with your fingers, and of course, it's someone else's brother, narrower across the shoulders than yours, but with the same sad slouch, the grin that does not hide the stubbornness, the sad refusal to give in to rain, to the hours wasted waiting, to the knowledge that somewhere ahead a man is waiting who will say, no, we're not hiring today for any reason he wants. You love your brother. Now suddenly you can hardly stand the love flooding you for your brother, who's not beside you or behind or ahead, because he's home, trying to sleep off a miserable night shift at Cadillac so he can get up before noon to study his German. Works eight hours a night so he can sing Wagner, the opera you hate most, the worst music ever invented. <laughs> How long has it been since you told him you loved him, held his wide shoulders, opened your eyes wide, and said those words, and maybe kissed his cheek? You've never done something so simple, so obvious, not because you're too young, or too dumb, not because you're jealous or even mean or incapable of crying in the presence of another man. No, just because you don't know what work is. I've learned the things I can do to stop myself, but not the things I can do to start myself. I know, for example, that if I'm a, a liar, I'm not going to want to hear my words. I know that if I drink too much, the next morning I'm worthless. You know, that there are a number of things, you know, that if I do, I'm going to stop myself. But what I can do to start myself, I don't know. And I don't believe in any kind of, uh, you know, that meditation will do it or the drugs will do it or any of this stuff. None of this is, I've tried them and not extensively, <laughs> the drugs, but I have tried them. They didn't do a damn thing. You know, I remember. The one time I took acid, the only thing I discovered was that the room got so aggressive. You know, you know, I get think, why doesn't, why, you know, just be a room. The door, you know, the wall, all, everything being so meaningful. Just calm down and I'll calm down and I don't need this crap, you know. Uh, you know, so I, I don't think there is a, I don't think there really is an answer. I think each of us finds what we, you know, the things we do that can stall us and then we learn to be patient 